please welcome to the stage a New York institution and a stage and screen icon, the one and only B.D. Wong. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. So nice to meet you. Come on. Welcome to the show. Thank you. What are you doing to kill rats? Um, I love rats. I would, oh. I, you know. I lived down in um, um, uh, Wall Street area for seven years, and the rats were really, really, really intense. Because so, of all the day trading. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably doing a lot of coke down there. But I'm really used to them. <laughs> I'm really used to them. I mean, like, they're part of, like, life. How's your strike summer going? Hot. <laughs> I'm um, sad and uh, invigorated and inspired and mad and um, kind of really into it, actually. Now, in keeping with the rules of these strikes, we're not going to talk uh, about your extensive TV and film career. Uh, you can Google it. <laughs> but there is a, a field that is currently still up and running for now. BD, you are both yourself a Broadway star <laughs> and a huge fan of musical theater. And a uh -huh, yeah. uh, And so now it's time for a game we're calling B.D. Wong, Guess This Song. <laughs> That's right. Now, for those at home, uh, we, have, uh, we have you in several iconic oh. characters. You are, there is B.D. Wong as Evan Hansen. Oh, wow. Um, a sociopath who gets away with it. Uh, we have uh, you as uh, Elphaba from, from Wicked. Um, oh, can I tell you something? Yes, please. You know, you know, you know Wicked? Yes. So I saw Wicked um, next to Harry Reid, the former uh, majority leader. And when I saw Elph uh, Elphaba do Defying Gravity, I, as a person uh, who is gay, uh, <laughs> stood up and started crying. Stood up. Stood up, at, you know, at the at the climax, you know, oh, right. to celebrate it was, it was yeah, over, yeah, yeah. and you know, celebrate the performance. And then I looked to my right, and and uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid was asleep. <laughs> so he, so he, he was. He's not a fan of the theater like like we are. Oh. I, 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 I want that file. We got, we'll get you the file. And then also, I think that's, I can't, I think that might be Rum Tum Tugger. I don't. That's Rum Tum Tugger, you're gonna yeah. Jump, you're going to jump the gun? I was about to say Rum Tum Tugger. <laughs> I said, I think that's, and you're going to shout Rum Tum Tugger at me? Give me a second. I know it's Rum Tum Tugger. <laughs> Sometimes I bully them a little bit. I <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. I'm ready. We're going to play a few seconds of a Broadway song, and you have to guess what it, what is, it, what it is. That's it. That's all there is to it. You're setting me up. I, I mean, my heart is beating so fast. I have the answers on the cards, and when you want, I can just show you. Can we cheat? You look, because, because you, you're, this is a podcast. Because you yourself don't know. Oh, I, well, I know the answers. I have the answers in front of me. This is rigged. Did you make these? Uh, there's a whole team that makes Love It or Leave It okay. happen. All right. All right, let's play our first clip. Hmm. Opening number, Book of Mormon. That is correct. Yeah. Let's play the next clip. Okay, I'm ready. Da, 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 da. Uh, Hamilton. Uh, King George song. Those King George songs are so fucking funny. <laughs> you should be King George, actually. Yeah. Yes, I, I do have... Uh, uh, on fu Smugness. Smugness, you're going to yeah. shout? He was helping you. What? You were reaching. You were you, reaching. He was helping you. you. Based on where you're sitting, you bought these tickets a long time ago. You planned a whole night out. You come and through the heat and the traffic, a crane fell and Chris Christie didn't build enough tunnels. And now you sit here and you wait for your moment. You could have said anything. <laughs> we could have said regal. 
But no, I am a bit smug. I noticed, yeah. Next clip. What do you think it might be, BD? It's hair? You got it. I've never seen hair. No, really? No, I haven't. I'm just telling you. I'm not. Oh. Can't admit something like that? Yes. Yeah. Should I see it? You'll have a chance. Yes, sure. There's nakedness in it. Ooh. Nudity. Nudity? Famous nudity. Famous, yeah, it is, has famous Notorious nudity. Notorious famous nudity. That's cool. <laughs> Next up. Oh, you could drive a person crazy from company. Wow. You know what I like? I like, you, you're really, um, you're, you're re you really kind of like, for a moment, I actually, when you said, oh, this is a setup, I'm not sure what's gonna happen, there was a moment I was like, did we make this too hard? That's the performance <laughs> oh, I'm getting. That's, that's, the, that's the, it was such, you tricked me, it's, it's great. But I don't know what you're, what you're, what you're like, cooking up, so I, it could be like w way worse than this. It could be. It could. <laughs> Next up. Oh, wow. Can you do it one more time? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here. Give it to him one more time, come on. Oh, shoot, I can't get that. That's, that's really short. Does anybody have a guess out there? That's not into the woods. No. <laughs> that is my blanketed me from a you're, from you're a good man, Charlie Brown. That's why he made By it so the short. the one it's and me. only yeah. B.D. Wong. Yeah. It's actually me. <laughs> so what? I, what? What is that? I think it's. I think it speaks really highly of you, actually. Because you're not so focused on, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not so smug. obsessed with your yeah. own. No, you're, not, you're certainly not smug. No one would say of the two of us that you're the smug one. <laughs> That's not what this would be. That Charlie Brown, that music was, it's a phenomenon. It was a phenomenon. I mean, it was everywhere. It was the, um, for the most part, the debut of Kristen Chenoweth. So that was like a huge thing to experience. A wonderful experience. Oh, thanks. It was amazing, she said. She saw it five times. Mm. And he was amazing. He was. Great. Why'd you say it? It was amazing. <laughs> say he was amazing. Say both were amazing. Sorry, I'm sorry. Specific projects, specific <laughs> projects. Oh, that's Broadway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. Four porn. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Four porn. Is it Avenue Q? It's Avenue Q. No. It's the internet is for porn from Avenue Q. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, let's. Oh, this one's. Let's do this one. Uh, let's see what's next. Oh, that's um, uh, String Awakening. Yes! Let's jump one. That's, that's dangerous. I think it's the bicycle music from um, uh, Flower Drum Song, the revival. No. No. That's the advantages of you see, floating in the middle. That's also me, too. Of the sea. Yeah. From Pacific Overture, sung by B.D. Wong. Yeah. Look at you. What a life. Look at, yeah. look at the, the, va the, the vast oeuvre. You, don't, you can't even retain it. You've done so much incredible yes, work. that's right. Yeah, it that's just goes cool. In one, it just goes right out. Yeah. Wow. Hey, can I ask you something? No. It seems... Um, I do a show like this once a week, and I'm spent... That Broadway cadence. <laughs> How do you do it? It's eight shows a week, is that right? 
or seven? Yeah. How many? Seven or eight? You have to really like be into it. You know, like you get really into it when you're in like high school and you're on fire doing it, and then it never goes away. And you get uh, invigorated by the fact that the, the whole room is full of new people. Like you don't tell the same jokes to the same group of people. That gets, that's what gets dull. Like showing all the same people the same joke. <laughs> no, no, he's putting it in a way that I would understand. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's physically incredibly demanding. It is, yeah. It really is. You're kind of wasted, and then you have to really like por portion out your day for the energy that you're putting out, and you have to, uh, you know, map everything out for the day. Your voice, your voice alone, just using your voice. Yeah, how, uh, I mean, you know, you gotta buy like honey and syrups and so forth. Yes. Various salves and balms. <laughs> What happens if you just like, oh God, I just don't want to sing today? Uh, I don't know what to say to that. You, you sing. <laughs> you, <laughs> and because the show must go on. Yes, it's a thing actually. <laughs> as, as, as we go along and, and, and generations turn over and generations turn over and there's kind of an old school, the show must go on feeling. And then there's a new generation of people who call in um, and let their understudies go on. And there, there's, a, there's a lot of pros and cons to both sides of the, of the thing. You know, old school people like just can't think of even letting anyone go on for them because they, you know, they, they feel an ownership over the role. And other people think of it more like work, I think. More like, you know, having a personal day and stuff. Have you ever had been doing a musical and it just went one of those nights where just everything goes wrong? Yes, sure. Well, I don't know if I can tell you an example, though. Um, can, oh, yeah, sure, opening night of a musical. But it, this, is, this is not a big Broadway musical. I will just tell you very briefly that I was in a one-person solo musical at the Williamstown Theater Festival. Oh, I went to Williams. You did? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so you know the theater and the festival. You bet I do. It was opening night, uh -huh. and I gored my leg on a piano bench uh, like 15 minutes into this 90-minute show. And I, went to the, I stopped the show, and I went to the emergency room, and I got 30 stitches in my leg. And I have a big scar right here. Because I was pra rehearsing in the rehearsal room with this piano bench that, um, you know, I did this like, you know that thing where you slide on the hood of a car? You know, I, slid on, I was sliding on the, on the piano bench. The, the pianist stood up and then I slid and then he sat back down. It was like a little bit. And um, when we went into the re rehearsal room, they finally put the, uh, this homemade piano bench up on the, on the wheels. <sighs> So it was this much higher than in the rehearsal room. And it had really sharp, beautiful, kind of like antique looking corners. <gasps> so I just basically went wee and stabbed myself <laughs> on the thing. And, and my, the, uh, Darren Lee, the choreographer of the show, was in the audience and said uh, that the corner of the piano, I shouldn't maybe say this, but was um, dripping with, <laughs> yeah. Kind of a, 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 not blood, not blood, like, you know, kind of a viscousy kind of fat. And there was, there was a splatter of blood and uh, viscousy fat material on the music, on the page, on the page. So I don't know if that's considered everything going wrong. I would say a <laughs> splatter of blood on a piano, a trip to the emergency room, viscous. Yes. I'll count it. Let's get a, can we get a, that was correct. Uh, let's do one more, the last one. That's me too. <laughs> that. That is B.D. Wong, who won a Tony for Featured Actor for M. Butterfly's original Broadway one, which now had the Tony that year. Hey, this is better than that time in Williams, huh? So far. Everybody, give it up for B.D. Wong. He'll be back for the Red Wheel. This is fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.